Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. So today what I'm going to go through is another cut type of special right triangle. So in our last video, we showed how if I take an equilateral triangle and I cut it in half, I create a right triangle that has an angle of 30, 60, and 90, and that triangle follows a very specific pattern. So today we're going to do something similar. So I have a square in front of me, and every side of this square is one unit long. And every angle in this square is 90 degrees. That's a fact about a square. I'm going to draw a line connecting this top left corner all the way down to this bottom right corner. When I did that, I just cut the tri or cut the square into two equal triangles. I have this blue triangle here on the left, and then I have another triangle on top. What I also did is I just bisected the corners. Instead of 45, this angle, or instead of 90, this angle is now 45. This angle is now 45. And not only is this blue triangle a right triangle, it's also isosceles because we have two congruent sides, which tells me that these base angles should be congruent angles, and they are. So, how am I going to figure out this missing side of the triangle? Well, since it's a right triangle, we can use Pythagorean theorem to solve for that red line down the middle. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The c would be this red side that I'm trying to find. So that means that I can let 1 be a, so 1 squared, and 1 be b, 1 squared. And I'm going to leave c squared alone. 1 squared is 1, so it's really just 1 plus 1, which equals c squared. 1 plus 1 is 2, equals c squared. And to get rid of a square, I take a square root. So c equals the square root of 2. However, I cannot take the square root of 2 and get a whole number. I'll get a decimal. I also can't reduce it because 2 is a prime number. So it's going to stay as square root of 2. Now, this is a special right triangle because it is exactly half of a square, meaning that no matter how big or how small I make this square, the two triangles that are inside will always follow this pattern. It will always go 1, 1, square root of 2. Even if I have a square that sides of, let's say, 5, the diagonal down the middle's length will be 5 square root of 2 because it follows that same pattern. 1, 1, 1 square root of 2. 5, 5, 5 square root of 2. I can even go as big as 100 if I want to. So a square with side lengths of 100, it still follows the pattern. So it would go 100, 100, 100 square root of 2. Follows the same pattern every time. So to help us organize this pattern, we're going to do exactly what we did with the 30, 60, 90 triangle. We're going to use a hashtag. Across the top, we're going to put our angles, 45, 45, and 90. And across from each angle is the pattern that we're going to use. So again, imagine our little spray water bottle. If I spray water out of this 45 degree angle, I'm spraying towards the one side. So I'm going to put a 1 underneath the 45, but there's 2. Back here, we talked about how this is an isosceles triangle. And if you notice, across from the other 45 is also 1. So actually, both of these are going to be a 1. And across from the 90, if I spray water out of the 90, I'm spraying towards that square root of 2. So that will be square root of 2. And to help us represent the fact that I can multiply that square by anything I want to help us with this pattern, we're going to put an x in there too. So 1x, 1x, x square root of 2. This table will help us organize the pattern so that we can easily figure out the answer of these problems. So let's look at one together. Example 1. I have a right triangle because of the box that's in the corner. It's 90. And the top angle, angle F, is 45 degrees. That means that angle D is also 45 degrees. 
and it's a special right triangle. So I can use a hashtag to organize my pattern. 45, 45, 90, x, x, x square root of 2. The only side that I know right now is angle 8. So if I sprayed water out of angle 8, I would be spraying across the triangle to 45. So I'm going to put that 8 into a 45 column. However, there are two of them. So which one do you think? Well, again, back here, we said that that blue triangle was an isosceles triangle. We know that two sides are going to be the same. So I can actually put it in both 45 columns because those are the sides that are the same. So across from this other 45 degree angle, that bottom side, DE, will also be 8. Now if x is 8, that means that x times square root of 2 would just be 8 times square root of 2. And I can't actually multiply those two things together, so I leave it alone. Across from 90 will be 8 square root of 2. So let's answer these questions and we'll try another one. ED is 8, DF is 8 square root of 2. Example 2, we have a right triangle and angle N is 45 degrees. That means angle W is also 45. We have a special right triangle. We can make a hashtag to help us figure out the pattern. So across the top, I'm going to put 45, 45, 90. And in the second row, I will go X, X, X square root of 2 because that's the pattern that it follows. The only side that I know right now is this 15 square root of 2. The angle that it's furthest away from, the angle it's opposite from, is the 90. So underneath 90, I'm going to put 15 square root of 2. Now, if you're not sure what x equals by looking at that, you could think about it this way. We just put that 15 square root of 2 underneath x square root of 2. That tells me that x square root of 2 equals 15 square root of 2. To solve for x, I would want to divide by square root of 2. And when I do that, it cancels out on both sides. And I get that x equals 15. So that is the solution for the other two sides. x is 15. And they're exactly the same because it's an isosceles triangle. So N is, E is 15, and EW is 15, and we have solved the triangle. Now, before we go on to example 3 and example 4, there are some rules about square roots that we need to review. First, we need to review how to multiply square roots. So just like when we multiply a constant number and a variable together, like 2 and x, we can't really do anything with them, so they just kind of sit next to each other, and we say it's 2x. I have two x's. Same thing when we multiply a constant number to a square root. I can't actually multiply them because one's underneath the square root sign and one's not. So if I have two times square root of three, that's really saying I have two square roots of three. I have two of them. They can't be multiplied together. They just kind of sit next to each other. However, if both numbers are underneath the square root sign, I can multiply them together and I will keep the square root sign. 2 times 3 is 6. So square root of 2 times square root of 3 is square root of 6. Let's look at the next one. We have the 7 out front and then square root of 2 and square root of 3. Well, 7 is a constant. It's not under square root, so it can't get multiplied to anything. It's just going to hang out out front. But I can do square root of 2 times square root of 3 7 square root of 6. Okay. One more. What if it's 7 square root of 2 times 7 square, or sorry, times square root of 2? Well, again, the 7 just has to chill out. It doesn't have anybody to multiply with. Square root of 2 times square root of 2 would be square root of 4. And 4 is a perfect square, so that would really just be 7 times 2, which is 14. So the square root went away in that case. 
Now let's review dividing square roots. So if I have kind of similar to if I did 8 divided by x, you can't really do that. There's not a number to divide. Same rule applies here. I can't divide 8 by square root of 3 because 3 is underneath the square root sign. However, we are not allowed to have a square root in the denominator of a fraction. It is not allowed in the rules of math. So what we have to do is called rationalizing. I'm going to take that square root of 3, and I'm going to multiply it to the bottom, and I'm going to multiply it to the top. I do this because on the bottom, the square root will go away. Watch. 8 times square root of 3 is 8 square root of 3. On bottom, I have square root of 3 times square root of 3, which is square root of 9. And 9 is a perfect square, so I can reduce it to just a 3. Now you need to check and make sure that your two constant numbers can't be divided. I can't divide 8 by 3, so in this case, oops, in that case, I am finished. Oops. Sorry, I multiplied it by square root of 3. It would be 8 square root of 3 over square root of 9, which is 8 square root of 3 over 3. I can't divide 8 by 3, so that one is frozen. We're done. Let's try another one. I have a square root of 5 on bottom. I can't divide, but I can rationalize. So I'm going to multiply it to the bottom, multiply it to the top. On top, I have 2 square root 5. On bottom, I have square root of 25. And the square root of 25 is just 5. I can't divide 2 by 5, so we are stuck. That's done. Let's try the next one. I can't divide 12 by the square root of 2, but I can rationalize this. So I'm going to multiply square root to the bottom, multiply square root of 2 to the top. On top. I have 12 square roots of 2 divided by square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is just 2. But this time, I can divide 12 by 2. And 12 divided by 2 just equals 6. So this would be 6 square root of 2. And now it's done. One more. I'm going to take the square root of 3, multiply it to the bottom, multiply it to the top. On top, I have 15 square root of 3. On bottom, I have square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is just 3. But again, you got to check those constants. I can divide 15 by 3, and I get 5 square root of 3. So now that we've got that little craft course, let's look at our next two examples of special right triangles. Number three. This is a right triangle again, and one angle is 45, so that means angle C is also 45. So I can use a special right triangle hashtag to help me figure out the pattern. Across the top, I put 45, 45, 90. Underneath, I put X x, x square root 2. The only side that I know is that 7 square root of 2. And it is all the way across from a 45. So in the 45 columns, I can put 7 square root of 2. Remember, both of the 45s are x's, which means that the one next to it is also 7 square root of 2. So across from the other 45, this side BC will also be 7 square root of 2. But now I have to figure out what x square root of 2 equals. So remember, when we put the 7 square root of 2 right here under 45, we also put it underneath x. That means that x equals 7 square root of 2. So if I want to find x times square root of 2, I would take my x, 7 square root of 2, and multiply it by 2 which is a problem we just did. That would equal 7 square root of 4. The square root of 4 is just 2, so 7 times 2, which is 14. So across from 90, that side will be 14. Last one. 
I'm going to give myself some room here. All right, we have another right triangle. Angle L is 45. That means angle J is 45. So I can make my special right triangle hashtag to help us figure this out. Across the top, I put my angles, 45, 45, 90. In the box below, I put X, X, X squared root of 2. That's the pattern it follows. The only side I know right now is this 22, and it's all the way across from 90. So in the 90 column, I will write 22. Now when I put that 22 there, I also put it underneath the x square root of 2. So that means x square root of 2 equals 22. The other two sides are x. We need to solve this equation for x so that I can figure out the other two sides. So what I'm going to do is divide both sides by square root of 2. This would cancel, and I'm left with x equals 22 divided by the square root of 2. I can't actually divide those because 2 is underneath the square root, but we can rationalize it. Multiply square root to the bottom, multiply square root of 2 to the top. I get 22 square root of 2 on top. On bottom, I would have the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 is just 2. But I can go one step further because I can divide 22 by 2, and I get 11 square root of 2. So x is 11 square root of 2, and that's our other two missing sides. Alrighty, so that is our other special right triangle, 45, 45, 90. Um, the problems that we will see most often are actually example 1 and example 2. So if you feel comfortable with those, you should be all right. Example 3 and example 4 are a little more advanced, but we can still figure them out. Um, it just takes a little bit of work. You won't see these very often, but they will come up. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me during class or come by for tutoring, and I'll see you later.